Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Volkswagen ID4, first edition. This is the, well, I call it the base trim, but it's the lower trim. If you go for the max, you will get a bigger screen. So this is equipped with a 10 inch screen. Max gives you 12 inch screen. So it's slightly bigger, yes. But okay, the first thing I wanna show you is uh, the, the instrument cluster. So you see here, well, now we are in park. If you press brake, well, hmm. well, I think I've been uh, in, I've been going in and out the car too much, but I think I have to start. Uh, okay. Yeah, you see now, now, yeah, now we are in hold. Usually, when I when I will drive, it goes automatically. I don't think about this. Uh, but you see now we are in the drive mode, and um, what I don't like is that here we see battery scale-ish, okay, and then you see GOM. The reason why GOM is so low now is because I've been driving 1,000 km challenge. Usually it should be around over 400 kilometers. But uh, what I don't like here is that um, if your state of charge goes below 10%, then you suddenly see percentage here. <laughs> it's, it will display here in red. And you see there's space here that is not being used. So why can't Volkswagen just move this one slightly to the right and then show state of charge always because that's actually very useful information for many people looking at the the estimated range is not always that useful so uh, and i also want to show something something else is that um, if you navigate to some place let's say a uh, destination have some uh, favorites here uh ion didal for example okay 49 kilometers away doesn't matter too much now we see that we have the next turn coming up here in the display and then we have a button here for changing view so if we go to the left now press left this is the mode where okay i can't show you right now because we are not on the highway but here we will have adaptive cruise control settings i mean display the, the, the following distance you have uh, uh, if you have lane assist or travel assist it will be shown here uh, so yeah, for the for the most, if you want this screen, you want the most information about travel assist. But then you see there is no information about uh, navigation. Then you have to look in the main screen for it. And then if you go left one time, you have everything in one screen like this. And if you go one more time, this is the one I like, which is that then you will see the navigation here. But you will also see normally you will see. You will see the, can you press, oh, I forgot this is not the uh, touch screen. <laughs> you will also see the distance, which is displayed here, 49 kilometers. It will be displayed on the bottom here. But what I don't like, the inconsistency is that we have plenty of space here. We don't have to use that much space. What I want to see is the distance to destination always on the bottom, uh, consistently. When you go into this screen uh, before a turn, the distance uh, disappears and I don't need to have everything that large. So, and another, another thing I don't like is that if you cancel the navigation here and then you go, uh, you navigate to whatever and start, it will default back to this screen, which is also not consistent and not great because it should remember that I switched here and then it should use this one. But then I guess uh, the thing, the, 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 I guess the, pro, uh, the software has not been programmed to be able to show you this screen if you haven't nav navigated anyway. That's why it defaults back, but it should still remember that setting. Because you see here, if, it's, if you haven't navigated anywhere, when, then we can't simply press right to go there, but it should still remember my setting. That's my point. But now we are kind of nitpicking. So I think at this point, uh, let me think. Yeah, we are done with the with the infotainment screen. Now. I mean, with the uh, with the instrument cluster. Now we just want to check out the main screen here. So mainly, I will be sitting in this screen here. Uh, but the first thing I want to show you is that uh, if we just put the car in drive, I guess, uh, and then park, and then open. Yeah, this one will arrive. This one will appear once you um, park the car after a drive. This one will appear. This feature, all right, and then, yeah, the, the problem now, this is also a, a weird thing is that once you put the car in park, you get you get the, the, the light on the roof for about a minute or something. You guys probably noticed how it was a minute or something, uh, but you, you might not want to exit the car yet, you know? And the problem is that now if I want to press, I'm pressing on top of the roof, I, I can't light, I can't turn on the lights. The only way to turn on the light is to press the brake 
and then you can turn on the light on the top here but then you are back in the drive mode as as if you would drive <laughs> uh, or you press the brake or you can press the power button here and then the light comes on so you might not want to do that every time so that's also a weird uh, feature or whatever uh, I, yeah weird feature I, I wouldn't call it a bug so uh, and no another thing I want to show you some inconsistency with the software is that now we press the brake as if we would drive but we didn't drive and that's something I might do when I'm plugging in to charge and whatever and if I exit the car now you see that we don't get that option to preheat uh, to, to do to use that preheating feature which I really love I'm gonna explain more about it what you have to do then which you might not be able to do because you're plugged in because then you have to unplug is that you have to go into the drive mode as if you were drive and then if you press park you will get this one back so <laughs> that's the inconsistency I don't like <laughs> but I found a workaround because this one here the feature here air, air condition now is um, it's like keep climate on in a Tesla so when you uh, enable it it will keep the heater running for 25 minutes uh, the difference is that in the ID3 ID4 if I would drive now for let's say 10 minutes and then I stop to go grocery shopping it's still active Wait, yeah now the light, that light went off <laughs> yeah but it's still active until you um, I can do this as a workaround for now uh, no, actually, no, even the, okay, even the makeup light doesn't work. I'm just kidding. But anyway, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, why do I, why do I, I'm nitpicking with this? Because you, you might put the car in park and then you might want to have the lights on so you can, you can talk to, to the passenger. and like, oh yeah, have a nice day. Yeah, see you, see you next week or something. But then the light goes up, you know? But yeah, so, um. Uh, this one, yeah, okay, back to the home point. We, we, it will last for half an hour. If you drive, it will kind of still be active. And then when you park after 10 minutes of driving, it will be active for another 20 minutes. That's how I think it is. I haven't tried it. I just noticed that that's how it works. But for Tesla, the keep climate on or the dog mode or the, the camper mode is that once you put the car in drive and start driving, it will default back to the normal setting. And then once you park again, at the grocery shop or whatever uh, you have to re-enable keep climate on so uh, which one is the best well mm, I'm not sure hips and hops like I say in Norwegian but um, you, you know I complain about this one being inconsistent and the whole stationary air conditioning here you can you can also enable it here one one of them not both there's actually two settings but only one is visible here and then this one it doesn't work <laughs> it still doesn't work I have the latest version uh, the 2.1 software and it still doesn't work so you see this car still has some bugs but at least from what I heard from Volkswagen the critical bugs with uh, the car that uh, it has problems uh, it shuts down or it has the fogging problem or whatever those problems have been fixed so you can safely buy the car there's no critical problems it's just nitpicking yeah but let me show you something here I found a workaround for this one because I love that feature. So um, what you can do is that you go, uh, yeah, yeah, you go, you go here, and I have it here because here you can have. Let me, let me just. I want to have the light on again. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's better. So here, what? Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. The, the whole light setting here is a little bit confusing. There, yes, finally. So. You see, I have this one, the toggle button here. You can also, we have auto hold here. And I have a notification. You also have auto hold. You can also enable and disable that one, which is very nice. And also put steering wheel heater here. Huh? Super comfy because if you don't have it here, you have to go into climate and that would, you will have it there. Well, I guess whatever works for you. I just wanna, I just, I didn't know what to put there. So I put the steering wheel heater there, but oh, oh you can toggle between, uh, high medium low okay 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 and this is background lighting you can go straight to the setting here and adjust some settings for uh, 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 let me see yeah th this one well you can customize but you have the the ambient light you can just adjust it here as a, a hot key for it. but I'm gonna show you a trick that I didn't know of actually when I tried the ID3 I didn't figure it out 
until now with the ID4 is that you can hold down there, but you have to be stationary. You can't do this while, while driving. You know, Germans, they are super strict about uh, safety. What you can do now is you can put another, uh, I don't know, a window heat. You see, you have lots and lots of uh, options. Well, not many, but you have some options here. So you can, for example, put Bluetooth here. Yeah. yeah, now you have Bluetooth there. Okay. Um, and you can just put other stuff there. But one thing I tried is that I haven't figured out if you don't, how, if you want to move steering wheel heater there, how do you do it? Um, you can't. You can't just do this and then move it like you know, the way it would, should be intuitive. You can't do that. You have to do this. I'm going to show you. <laughs> and then you have to put something else there. Boom. And then you have to go to Bluetooth. No, wait, what was it again? It was, uh, man, I have so short memory span. Yes, yeah, steering wheel heater. And then you have to take the steering wheel heater, put it there. <laughs> yes, now, now I'm gonna configure back to the way I like it. So uh, I want this one <clears throat> there, okay. And I want to do the heat now. I love, I love the heat now feature, really. It's superb. And then you take the, you slide over here, you find the steering wheel heater, which I actually don't use very much, but I didn't know what else to put there. There, there, you see? The pro tip to you. And here you can also change the, the light, uh, how bright it is. But one thing which is confusing is that you have one slider here for adjusting the light. You're gonna have it low so you can see the screen, but I'm gonna show you something else. If you go here in the settings, I am starting to learn how it is now. Just in short terms, the the infotainment here in Volkswagen is a big mess, not logically organized. You have to know which menu to find some settings. One great example is Tesla. I'm not saying this because I'm Tesla fanboy, but once you learn how Tesla have organized uh, the menu and uh, stuff, you will figure, you will realize that most other EVs they they are just messy. Really, so I, I'm not saying that this one is messier than other infotainment system. I'm just saying that it, it is messy, <laughs> like the rest of the pack. But okay, anyway, when you go to screen here, you also have another brightness setting. But this one is not a slider. We have very high. Uh, so, um, yeah, you see it changes the, the brightness. <laughs> so I just put that in medium. So this is very confusing that you have some screen setting here and then some on the top here <laughs> yeah and you have some more settings here okay i like that it's very it's very nice and tidy and it's easier that yeah i have the hand gesture on that's why maybe i should switch off the hand gesture because i rarely use it let me switch off this proximity sensor also it's very nice that i mean it's easy to understand how this works you, you it's intuitive and you just press and most people they know how it works you don't have to you don't have to, you know, if you can operate the car without reading the manual, then they have designed it well. So that one is good. And I used, um, I, I also reviewed and I tested the e-golf many times before. And the e-golf touchscreen, I got the feeling that they, <laughs> they have just adapted the non-touchscreen variant of it. I don't know, maybe there was some uh, like a, like a uh, jog wheel or something, right? I got the feeling that that one was not designed as a touchscreen. It was weird and they used lots of space for nothing really. Buttons were way too big or whatever. But at least in the ID3, ID4, I get the impression that it has been designed as a touchscreen, but it's just that they haven't <laughs> organized the menus that well. So I will, you will see more once I dig deeper into it. This is going to be a freaking long ass video. So. I'm not sure where to start. Maybe I should start here. You see, we are here we have the stationary air conditioning. Uh, this one is... Uh, well, no, bit the budget. Uh, I think you can... No, you can't do anything here. Yeah, okay. This one will be active once you have a departure time. And I like this one because you can set a departure time. You set the clock when you want to leave. And you can say... Well, now we set it to once only. So, uh, let's say it's Sunday today. So, let's say Sunday at... Uh, 
19 something right it will just run it once and then it this and then after it finishes i haven't tested it but i figured that how it works after it runs the whole preheating it will self disable it that's the way that one works but if you want to have it like uh you want to repeat it and say that uh, you go to work uh, you want to leave work at eight then you, you want the weekdays to preheat that's how you do it so well okay and then I have to enable it yeah so you see super nice you have two schedules seems like you can have more i mean <laughs> there's space for more so maybe they can enable more schedules uh, for that one so i'm just going to dis dis disable it <clears throat> and this is just well, i don't know there's some automatic heating here uh, and then for settings here just yeah yeah you can uh, this is pretty cool because you can start the 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 heater once you enter the car wait a minute this one is disabled i'm gonna check something here some inconsistency uh well, i have the app here the we connect app i'm gonna check because there's also a setting here uh doo -doo -doo. oh yeah, yeah yeah it's it's disabled okay so this is pretty cool i'm just gonna show you a glimpse of the app here but watch this one i'm going to change the setting press done Boop. It, it changed so that this is a nice feature this one because um, uh, many evs actually many most the majority of the evs once you enter the car the car will be off there is no heater going on you have to press that power button you have to press the start engine button to get heater on here if you configure it like this, it would be like Xpeng and Xiaopan and Tesla, which is that once you open the door, it will start the heater. So I love that feature. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, uh, there's so much stuff here. I think I want to show you something here. If I, I need to uh, show you a bug since I remember it, otherwise I'm going to forget about it. Uh, we're gonna try to just call uh, a number Tesla support. Okay, I'm calling. Oh shit! No, no, no! Stop! 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 Okay. Pay attention up here. We have the clock and the temperature, the outside temperature. Once you call someone, and as long as you are in a in a conversation, I'm just gonna show you once more. Okay, I don't want to call. Well, actually, I, th I think I can call them because there would be a, a, an answering machine. Let me just lower the volume. Just look at it. I always, I always thought that I always think that 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 voice is so cringy. Like, oh yeah, talk for the a Tesla. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but look here. The time has been pushed down, but the outside temperature disappeared. And we still have more space here. So why couldn't they put that one there instead? So we can still have the outside temperature. Now, why do I complain about this? Because there was, I, I know maybe this is a corner case, but I was uh, traveling and I wanted to, to know outside temperature. And I called someone, it was Chris. And then the outside temperature was gone. So, so you know, why really? Why do you, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's just stop complaining about that one. Here we have settings. We have the offline mode, which I actually don't understand what the heck it is. You can you can go offline uh, with the car, uh, but it's when you put the car in offline mode. As far, as far as I understand, you can still check state of charge. You can still uh, what well, we can we can just test it now. Really, I mean, this is I think it's just the offline of something else inside the car because I can still go to the app here and I get. Oh no, I'm I'm now the car. Oh, it's offline mode. Okay, I can't contact the car. Vehicle. Oh, wait. Does that mean that it's like the, it's like in the test? Yeah, it's like in Tesla. Where okay, now I have to. I don't know what the heck happened there. I think I have to restart the app. In Tesla, you also have that uh, enable or disable uh, remote access. So that's the same setting then. Uh, however, now I enable it. Oh, okay, it takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. And you, you see also notification here, internet connection. So it's, it's, okay, it's, it's firing up the whole thing. Okay, but whatever. whatever. Um, here you have some screen settings. Uh, fairly easy to understand how it works. Time and date. You can set some time or whatever. Uh, language, you see, units. Um, not going to go through all of this. Um, but you have some settings here. 
right? For screen or whatever. But this is the confusing part because if you go back here, you have um, you have some more settings here for background, and then you have um, sound settings here with some other menus here. So um, because if you go here, this is not setting. It's not a setting page. It's actually to call people. It's a phone thing. And if you go uh, here, you get the navigation. So it's like a it's like a cluster fudge of apps and settings mixed together instead of putting all the settings in the settings. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and here we have driver assist settings uh, where you can change. You can that's that one is also access accessible via the assist button down here. It goes to the same place. Um, and then let's see uh, how is this again. Yeah, the, the, the confusing part is that um, you can access it. You can access it here, but you can also access it here, there. And the same goes for climate. You can access the climate here, or you can just press over here to access it. So that's nice. It's convenient that you have several places to reach it. Reach it. Um, but I think the the parking assistance, yeah, the park the park. Well, actually, no, that was driver's. Yeah, the park assist menu here. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. This one is only accessible via the button, and the same score. The same goes for the drive mode. It's only accessible via uh, the button here. So that's a also a little bit con inconsistent that we have two buttons that are only there. Why didn't they put the mode mode and the P menu also in here, right? <laughs> um, and also one thing I learned is that you can move these again you just press and hold and then you can move it very convenient because then I move I move the most used one to the top but here you can hold and move but okay here you can hold and move here the, uh, the uh, icons look the same but you cannot hold and move. <laughs> so that inconsistency is kind of annoying me as a software developer, a, a former software developer. Um, all right, so that's one is nice. And then I don't think I'm gonna go up through all of this. It's very pretty self-explanatory. And here we have the navigation. I'm gonna show you something cool with the navigation. So if you go to destination here, I've saved some, uh, some destinations. So let's say if we wanna go to Ayonti Dal, like this, yes, we see some status here and you go start. And now we want to go to another destination. I have saved, I can look at the last destination. Let's say I want to go to Gran and then start. And you will, you can, like most EVs, except for Tesla, you can have waypoints. The most advanced software wise auto, electro auto in the car industry is Tesla. And Tesla doesn't have waypoints you can only navigate okay let's not i'm gonna stop bitching about it but let's see now so if you press this one directly to destination you erase the the previous one and you navigate to Gran. but if you do this one you add it as a stopover like most other cars but i'm gonna show you it's pretty smooth and nice here and easy to understand we are here we are going to Gran, and then i want to as default when you add the waypoint it will add it in between the, for the initial one, but you can also do this and then move it like this and then it recalculates and then you get the new distance. You see, and you can also take, uh, you can just press here and you can delete that waypoint and then you only go to ground. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. And I can also show you, uh, but okay. Uh, you can also look here if you press here and you go here. And you can see uh, an overview. But what I don't like here is that the, the overview should also include the distance to the total distance or whatever, but it doesn't show you. And what the heck, what the heck is this? Oh, okay, you have some settings for it. Yeah, but I'm not gonna walk through all of it. So I'm just showing you that that one. Oh, what the hell? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. But again, what I also don't like is the, the, the whole zooming part is that you zoom out. Uh, I wanna zoom out, but it, okay, I'm not gonna show you that one. Yeah, it's like how do what when you zoom out a sort at, at out to a certain point, then the this one here where you uh, change orientation is grayed out. <laughs> Why? Uh, uh, what, what happened there, really? Right. So well, uh, I guess I can toggle here 
and then toggle back here and then suddenly well, I just I, I bumped into the wiper but suddenly now you can toggle between the orientation modes so that's also weird and not consistent okay but then let's, let's delete the navigation here uh, let me check something else here by the way if I navigate to um, I want to check because GOM now says 273 kilometers if I go to um, Okay, I'm going to show you now. Search for Yelo. Well, because that one is at high elevation. Circle K Yelo. Yeah, let's go for that one. 273. Start. Let me check GOM. Okay, GOM stays at 273. If this was uh, um, Audi e-tron, the GOM will change because it knows that we are going uphill. Maybe it's too far away or whatever, but the GOM didn't change at all. So it seems like the navigation it doesn't take in uh, the, the destination as the, in the GOM. Yeah. GOM is a guestometer, by the way. So uh, I want to show you something other cool thing. Is that, let me see. Does it work here? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you press and hold, you can then change it to something else. Uh, is this going to be... What, can I delete it? Oh, then there's nothing there. Oh, what, really? Then it looks like this. Wait, okay, well, I, I don't want to do that. Okay, so you can put, I guess, radio there. All right. You see, now we have what, radio like this. Uh, so then, but you want to, I want to customize it back to the, where you, know, you want to have map there, like this. And that's pretty good. This is the one I'm used to. And you see here we have, well, actually, this one is a bit weird. I just played around with it. But by default, it will look something like... Uh, it will look something like uh, this, this, no, no, this, this, like this. Yeah, this is the default one that most people see. Um, and if you go to vehicle, you then have state of charge here. This is the only place you see state of charge. Now, one other confusing thing is that the state of charge here is is lagged. It's um, it's not updated that frequently. And the way I I discover that is that once I went low to ten percent. The instrument cluster will show you state of charge in percentage, but the instrument cluster updates faster. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I remember there was a situation where I saw here that ah, oh, we have uh, we have enough juice, but then suddenly it just jumped a lot, and then I saw in the instrument cluster, oh, I had actually less juice than I thought. <laughs> so you just know that one, yeah. And also when you charge, I'm not going to show you here, but. Uh, I've, I've shown you before, the charging speed is shown in kilometers per hour or kilometers per minute. It doesn't show you, you uh, kilowatt. And what makes it even more inconsistent, you're going to hear the whole inconsistent word a lot, is that the charging speed here is not based on the fixed rate. Uh, for example, in Tesla, it's based on the fixed rate, the, the kilometers per hour, if you choose to show that one. And then you can kind of then if you know that, okay, uh, at 50 kilowatt fast charger, if you get 200 kilometers per hour, then that's 50 kilowatt, something like that. Here, the kilometers per hour or kilometers per minute depends on the, the previous driving habit. If you've been having high consumption, it will show different here. You know what I mean? So that is inconsistent and then it's not, it's useless. That's what I'm saying. The kilometers per hour number here is useless because it changes all the time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, here we have the reduced AC current. Um, which is that if you are AC charging at home and you have uh, you don't have a powerful enough breaker, you can then reduce the charging current. But what I don't like is that you have no idea how fast you will be charging. So if I plug it in a, a Type 2 or something, I, it might be, let's say, 16 amp. And then I have to look in the manual, which is here in the car. And the problem is that uh, this one, I don't know if you can see it. Br huh? Bet Sun Lightung. Bet Sun Lightung. It's in Deutsch. Huh? That manual is in Deutsch. Scheiße. I want Norwegian manual. Okay, but that uh, uh, it's just a glitch because this is um, this is a press car. Yeah, I was just trying to be funny here. But <laughs> you have to then look into the manual, find the whole thing here, and figure out how many amps it goes to when you do the, the minimum. I mean the reduced, and it's only reduced. And this one in Tesla, 
you see how many amps you're charging at home, and then you can just change it. And you know, okay, the breaker can only take uh, eight amp. Well, you just change it to eight amp. But here, nine. And the same thing goes for a BMW i3. That one also, it has the, the high, the reduced, the mid, something. So like, why don't you just keep it simple? Show the number of amps. And then even better, you can have it in one amp steps, just like Tesla. Okay, here we have uh, locations. Uh, I haven't really tried this one. I can, oh, yeah, I can save charging location. I'm not going to walk through that one. It's, the video is going to be way too long. But you can have charging location. You can actually do lots of stuff with it, uh, just like mo many other cars. So no need to show you that one. Uh, this one is also a little bit confusing because I mentioned that we have some settings in the set the cog wheel You guys remember it, but you also have some settings here that you can only change here. For example uh, Headlights is done here. Very confusing, right? <laughs> Switch on time late. Ah Early. Ah, you see I, I'm just, I'm finding new settings every day. You know, it's like uh, the Volkswagen it's like a Kinder Egg. You get three times. You get three things in one go, right? The the chocolate, the surprise, and the whatever I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Uh, so ah, oh, you have some settings here. I didn't know. I had no idea. Okay. Uh, mirrors. Yeah, you have settings for mirrors and stuff here. Uh, but also, let me see. Uh, in in exterior, what we can you can also do like this swipe brakes. You have some brake stuff here. <laughs> And then in interior, you have uh, you can change the the ID light. That's that's the way I understand it. It's only done here. It's that light in the front here. Let me see. Will it? Yeah, yeah. It will. I don't know. No, you don't see it there. But well, I, I think you saw a little bit of it. Maybe. But yeah. So I changed this intensity. So you change some of the ID light settings here, and then I think cockpit is. Yeah, this is also weird. It's still there. Is that before? You have to go dig in deep into the menu, very unlogical, just to reset since start, since long term. They haven't removed it, but they have done some improvements. I'm going to show you because I'm going to check this one, interior lighting. Uh, yeah, this one is the, um, I mean, I think this, yeah, yeah this is, ooh. Ah, this is the, this is the light inside the car. I always thought it was a little bit dim. I didn't know you can adjust it, but you can do it here. Design dark right whoa no 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 let's not do that one wow so you see <laughs> it's a big mess finding stuff here and why what happened to the back door here this car has no suicide door so it should rip it should represent the car itself and also well the whole thing it's a white car there but the the reality is a gray car <laughs> but here we have status and then you have some tire pressure stuff here. You see, uh, okay, you can't see the the value, but you can you can, you can this is for for resetting tire pressure. Of course, if the applied tire pressure is low, you will see it. Uh, what is this service? Oh yeah, the wiper in service. Oh, it's inspection in. Okay, and you can put the wiper in service position, like this. It's a bit it's laggy. It's like f <laughs> one second lag in the infotainment. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, but here also this is also a weird thing. The odometer is here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually see the odometer when you go drive. No no, the odometer is not visible in infotainment. In in the no 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 nine nine. Okay, online mode. The the odometer is not visible in the in the in, in the instrument cluster. You can only see it here, which is the total mileage, right? But here you also have the distance covered with this, which is one of the trip meters and this one shows you fractions yeah i did the 1000 kilometer challenge and then uh, draw a little bit more so this one shows fraction and they recently added this button since since last the end of last year no no you see now the light goes off okay i have to do this i have to do this is it am i overexposed no not too bad okay so they added this one to reset this super nice now it's way more intuitive like it should be like like in Tesla or somewhere, but let me check. Yeah, that's the that's the one. You see, you you if you don't know what it is, you press it, and then it, it resets. And then maybe you're just passenger, and then the driver says, "Oh no, you reset it. Oh no, you you were not supposed to reset it." I'm like, I, I don't know what the heck that was. It looked like an owl. It looked like a face. I was just pressing it for fun, you know. So, and here is the inconsistency because if you go to data, you have trip meter here. 
it doesn't show your fraction. <laughs> Why? Because the other one here shows you the, the fraction. This one doesn't show you. We have plenty of space, plenty of space, but it doesn't show you fraction. And you have some trip data here, which is nice. Uh, but if you press this one, you will have a confirmation. Like, why? I mean, as a programmer, I would program this function. I will reuse the function, of course, and say that, okay, the reset function will automatically trigger a confirmation. And then, and then you input, you input the um, uh, parameters to that function saying that this is the sin start one. And then because then you display this one and of course you have to reset the, the scene start uh, time uh, counter. But it's inconsistent. So it sounds to me like the programmers at Volkswagen, they have a hardcore stuff or they haven't, they haven't programmed it well enough. They are not using the same function or I don't know what the heck they did. So, and also this one is going to give you guys headache or it's like the OCD just uh, nine. But no, I don't want to see it. Because it says 0.6 kilowatt hour per hour. We have this discussion before. It should just be 0.6 kilowatt. You don't... Uh, I've had this discussion before. It's like, you know, um, one light year is, is the distance the light travels in one year. So when you say one light year, that's a really long distance. But the speed of light is expressed in 300,000 kilometers per second. I think it was massive. So um, if you would say that we have now, uh, ex um, close this one. Um, this is gonna be a long ass video. I don't know where, how long it is, but whatever. Um, when you say that, um, if you say, uh, for example, uh, yeah, uh, SpaceX, they have now developed the next generation Falcon version 30 something right and it has the speed of well what we would say is they had a speed of uh, of uh, two times the speed of light right but instead of saying two times the speed of light the germans how would they do it they would say you have then the speed of two light years per year yeah that's what they would do the germans two light years per year. This is basically what it means. <laughs> it's what you call it, ambish, be, what, ambitious or whatever. It's, uh, it's uh, too much. If you know algebra, you have to, H divided by H should eliminate. H, di H di eliminates the other H. <laughs> yeah, and again, white car, but it's gray car outside, yeah. Uh, so we have this one since start, since charge will actually reset. Some cars I've tried, since charge doesn't reset properly. <laughs> and the long term, and the, actually the uh, since start and long term, which is also kind of confusing, is that this one also gives the confirmation. But this is basically just one trip and this is another trip. But they call it long term and since start, I guess it's nitpicking. In Tesla, it will be called trip A and trip B. Uh, same with many other EVs I tried. It's just trip one trip two or some things but i seen the germans even also the also um uh audi they have the long term or whatever if i remember correctly i haven't been in the audi e-tron in a while now so you see that one is also kind of clumsy um when we go here though i have customized this screen because most people they'll be hanging out in this screen but i figured out that this one cannot be customized that much. You have to have the big one here and the whatever here. But if you go here, we can then have the, the, the this is what I love because then I can have the trip here, for example, 1000 kilometer challenge. Okay, oh, we have 999 now, right? Well, except that we don't have fraction. <laughs> oh, but anyway, the one, the, the thing I like about this screen is that it's, it has a slightly different layout. And then if you navigate to, for example, DAL, okay, start, you see, I'm starting to get used to the infotainment screen. Now. And the coolest thing, if you go to, if you press this once, you go back to this screen and not the, the, the default screen, this one. It's actually, no, this one. You don't go back to that one. It remembers, except for when you press this one, then it will toggle between. <laughs> but you want to see this one because now suddenly, we can have distance to uh, destination here. We have trip here. You can see in the instrument cluster how much range you have. You can also click here to go to navigation. 
Um, this one also goes to navigation. So actually I could change, you can just change this one. Is there another button we can use? A more useful one? Maybe uh, we have phone, oh, we don't have phone here. Yeah, so we can just add telephone here. All is good. Now we have all, and also settings here. Quick, quick button to set, them. <laughs> some settings. Like a quarter of the settings here, the rest of the settings is spread all over, bleh, all over the rest of the, in, 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 in the whole uh, uh, infotainment system. <laughs> it should say some settings here. No, what the heck did I do now? I, did I, didn't I disable hand gestures? Oh, whoa. You know, I didn't actually touch it. Yeah, okay, whatever. So this is super nice. Pro tip for ID3, ID4 owners. Use this shit. I like it. You have everything in one screen and you can only customize it in this screen. You cannot change the layout here, the way I understand it, in this screen here. So that's very nice. And I think actually I'm getting, yeah, there's just so much settings here. Uh, in here we have the climate control. I also complained about this before that this one seems like it's off, you know, logically. When you have AC like this, it means it's on. When you switch it, when you switch off the AC, it's off. Yeah. So, but I want to have it an outdoor. Yeah, okay. But this button here is really confusing because um, now the air conditioning is on and it's grayed out, which is, in my opinion, incorrect because now when you do it like this, we switch off the air conditioning. It should be the opposite, really. But I know from a guy with eGolf that there was a button on the eGolf. This was an eGolf. I mean, sorry, not eGolf. It was an, a Golf, a fossil Golf, a, a, a gasoline Golf 4 or 5. I think it was Golf 5, yeah. For Golf 5 from about, from about 2003 or 2 or something. And there was a button in the, in the, in the car for, uh, for uh, air conditioning or something. And uh, the, the, the dealership told him that you should leave that one. It's, it's, uh, it was yellow. I think it was yellow. It was like constant yellow. And uh, the dealership recommended him to keep it on always because then it will just uh, keep the cabin nice and, and you know, get rid of moisture or whatever. I wonder if it was an AC button or something, but it was in, on logic the way it worked because I don't remember the detail, but uh, uh, it's so similar to this one. You know, it, it's because he thought it was off, but it was on or something like that. So that's also a little bit nitpicking for me. I, I don't know if I sh maybe I should say something about the, the, the driving, driving assist here. Um, what is the coffee break on? No, I want to switch it off. No, so you can go here. This, you can set, set all the driver assist settings here. Uh, but you see this car has only the, the ping pong lane assist, uh, not the, um, not the, the travel assist, which the more, the higher trim uh, has, then you, you have better steering stuff. So, but I think this video is getting pretty long. What is this? Internet really unavailable. There's some notification I delete it. Yeah, then the notification disappears. Uh, but uh, I should also show you that uh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show you something. Uh, once you go low on battery, you also get a notification about low battery and it is, it appears, I think it was here. I think it was in status. You get then a, a, another notification, but that notification cannot be uh, deleted. <laughs> but at least the good thing here is that uh, when you when you go low on juice and you charge it up, it doesn't show. Okay, because, because in the e-golf and some of the fossil cars, I think it was also uh, no, not the fossil, car, but in the e-golf and I mean the fossil-based car like e-tron, I think you get a low battery warning when you discharge the battery at, to a certain threshold and then you get another very low battery warning, you know, we charge very soon, even lower. And then when you start charging the e-golf and the e-tron, if I remember correctly, <laughs> you also get those warnings on the way up, which is a bug. But this one doesn't have it, at least. Uh, so I think I'm, uh, yeah, it's, I'm going to stop here because the video is going to be way too long. I could talk for another hour really about the infotainment screen, but, uh, what it does? Oh, that's a notification. Yeah. But, um, what I'm saying is that the, the infotainment screen here, infotainment system, 
is what is it too bright now suddenly well let's go to this screen this one this one is not overexposed where is it oh i accidentally uh, okay okay oh shit how long i've been doing that you guys can't see the okay whatever but uh, i might be able to correct this post uh, but um my conclusion is that um the the infotainment screen i mean the infotainment system in the id3 id4 is pretty good it's lacking some features like i would like to see charging speed but you can just use ev notify and then you see the battery temperature anyway so i highly recommend ev notify it's free the app is free um and then like me i have a phone holder and i just put the the ev notify app on the front front windscreen so i can always see battery temperature and what the heck is going on so uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, I've been driving the ID3, ID4 for a long, uh, many, many times. I've been borrowing it, but people who own this car, they will get used to where the stuff is. And you guys have seen the tip and tips and tricks, how you can configure it. So it's, so it's easier to, uh, to use the car, really. And also, you just have to learn how to use the navigation, how to set up your hotkeys, your favorites, whatever. And then, the nav the, then I would say that the infotainment system is not... It's not bad. It's actually, it has nice features like the navigation, the waypoints, the whatever. Uh, but it has some bugs, like the annoying bug with uh, here, but, but it's not critical. So, and also um, I noticed that uh, sometimes when I quickly get inside the car and I start driving and I want to navigate, you know, it, it goes kind of, let me see if I can, I can try to provoke it now, but most likely not, right? So if I do something like this, Leave the car, lock it, unlock it, oh, enter, and then, I don't know, maybe the car is kind of semi-alive. Yeah, 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 okay, the car, the car is uh, somewhat active right now, but if, if the car has been sleeping, then it, it seems like it's, oh, I have to wake up, so then, then when I want to access the navigation, it goes slow. <laughs> And I, I might have to wait one, two minutes before I can start the navigation. So that's actually a little bit bummer because um, many other infotainment systems, I think in the Korean cars or whatever, they, when you, once you fire up the car, okay, you might have to press like okay on some shit, like, <laughs> well, like uh, the leaf, but then the, the infotainment system boots up really fast. This one seems to boot up, I don't know, a little bit slower, but again, if it's just a matter of one to two minutes, then you can usually wait, right? You, yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, um, I've been using the ID3, ID4 infotainment a lot, and it never bugs for for me at least. It never ever bugs. Uh, like like I mean, the bugs yes they are here, but I mean I never get a hang or something, or weird weird graphics or whatever. So at least they have programmed it to be that stable, uh, because in the Tesla. <laughs> It will sometimes bug, and then you just have to know that you press the two, two scroll wheels on the on the steering wheel to reset it, and then it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's like every time you call Tesla support and you have a problem, Tesla support is trained to ask you, "Have you tried to restart the infotainment screen?" <laughs> they always ask you that, even if there's something wrong with the charge port. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So um, at least now this is. <laughs> I took the time to make this video because I know that uh, Volkswagen, they are watching my videos. The factory in Wolfs Wolfsburg, right? They are watching my videos. They are taking notes. I don't know really, I'm not trying to be, uh, to be, you know, I'm not trying to brag about something, but I don't know this button, this reset button, if it was because of my video that they, they put it there or if someone else complained about it and they put it there. So hopefully, in let's say three to six months, they might do something with the phone call when the temperature here, they might fix the bug when you leave the car and you want to set chain of set. They might fix the bugs or they might fix, uh, they might put the percentage in the instrument cluster or something. But again, you know, they shouldn't blindly listen to me. They should try to figure out and ask people and whatever uh, to figure out what changes they should do. But my, my, my claim is that uh, the, every car, every EV I've tried is almost as good as the software inside the car is that, or, or put it the other way is that uh, you can improve the car a lot by 
um, by improving the software. Like you can add, just look at Tesla. You know, they added dog mode. Uh, they added sentry mode and dash cam, like the hardware. They had the hardware and they just figured out, well, you know, we have fast enough processing power. Uh, the, the, those cameras were not designed to be dash cam cameras, but hey, we have a data stream. So we can just save that video stream into a memory card in the USB. And that's how Tesla added extra feature they originally didn't plan to make, a like camper mode. And also, so, you know, <laughs> other car manufacturers could, could also do that and they could improve the car and make it better. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to end here and say that cars software and cars app, mobile app is important. <laughs> and if you make good software for the car, it will make the car better and it will make uh, the experience for the user better. Yeah. So, all right. I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.